Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. I'm Steve Glenn. I'm Paul Glenn. And this week, I'm coming to you, Paul, from Montone, Italy. Can you believe it? I'm probably over 5,000 miles away from Lincoln, Nebraska, in executive travel. I'm here, Paul, in Umbria. Montone is in Umbria, province of, of Italy, which is just, most people know where Tuscany is, which is by Florence. And, and if they know that, they'll kind of know where Umbria is. We've had a great couple days here. We left on Friday of this past week, and we got here Saturday. And we've toured uh, Siena, Arezzo for the Christmas markets. My gosh, they were just packed shoulder to shoulder. Today, we went to Gubbio, and, and then we went into uh, the countryside. And I'll tell you, I had the best lunch of my whole life today in Gubbio. If you're looking for the best lunch ever, I've got the place, the best in the world. So we're going to have a lot of fun today as we talk about the best places in the world that uh, people want to put on their bucket list. Yep. Our topic for today is Steve's top 10 international travel destinations for 2024. So, you know, it just makes it even better that you're at one of them. So I think at this point, I guess people should be guessing, where does Italy fall on your list? Well, you can't ever go wrong to Italy. And as, as people know that traveled here this year, this was a record-breaking year. Paul, you were here with me in June and uh, it was wall-to-wall -wall people in Rome, wasn't it? No, oh, it was madness. So I'm looking forward. I'm supposed to be back there next week, hopefully. And uh, hopefully it's it's much more enjoyable with both the, the weather and the crowds. Should we get rolling? Let's get ready to rumble. You know? All right. So let's jump into Steve's top 10 international travel destinations for 2024. And number 10 on your list is Hong Kong. You know, Hong, Hong Kong, Paul, COVID virus just shut down China. And of course, Hong Kong is the gateway to China. So in the last three years, poor Hong Kong kind of just had a tough go of it for, for, for tourists. I love the glitz and glitter of Hong Kong. I think you do too. You took your family there several years ago, didn't you? Yeah, I've been there a handful of times. And I, I really do think if you're going to try to find a place to break into Asia, there's nothing better than Hong Kong for the way to break into Asia. You get the the amazing uh, experiences of, of what a, a city like that. I think it's like a seven square miles and, and, and certain square miles have got over 70,000 residents. So it's something that, uh, that those of us from the Midwest, it's not something that's part of our normal lifestyle. Well, but it's a lot of fun. It's, and it's a very electric city. I know years ago, I used to go there and get my suits made. They make a suit in 48 hours for you, Paul. But it's it's so much fun. There's great hotels. I love the new Ritz Carlton there. That's like 120 or 40 stories tall, and swimming pools on the 119th floor. I mean, it's just a blast. There's so many great hotels, places to eat, uh, markets to go to, and of course, the world goes there to buy all their expensive purses and uh, all the stuff around the world that people. Uh, uh, covet. Now, how would you, because you just recently did Dubai, so how would you compare it? Because they're both financial centers of, of the globe. How would you compare it to Dubai? Well, uh, Dubai also is uh, is uh, Las Vegas on steroids. But, uh, uh, you know, I was going to put Dubai this year into uh, into the top 10, and it probably should be in the top 10. But, but you know, Dubai is more spread out and it's more a water centric, although Hong Kong, the Star Ferry and uh, everything going on with the, the water and the shipping there. But uh, they're both warm temperatures. So uh, but they're just it seems like they're an apple and an orange. I, Hong Kong, I say, is more of the gateway to China, whereas Dubai is more of the gateway into the Middle East and to Africa. And Dubai is obviously a much newer destination compared to Hong Kong. It's been a, a center for a long time. So. Been, every, everything in Dubai has been built in the last 50 years. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty new everywhere. All right. Let's move on to number nine on the list. Uh, we've got Istanbul, Turkey, which I know that's on our agenda for a trip here potentially in the, the spring of next year. You bet. Uh, and Paul, probably what's put them on the map has been a, an airline called uh, Turkish Airlines. 
and we've seen them uh, grow. So they have one of the largest uh, airlines in the whole world with the largest, one of the largest number of destinations around the world. They have a great business class product. They allow for free stopovers, don't they, Paul? Yeah, and they'll uh, they'll actually give you tours while you have a a layover there. So if you have a layover over eight hours or something, they've got some nice city tours that they'll include at no additional cost. So great opportunity to to explore it while potentially on your way somewhere else in Europe. You bet. And so, and it's also fun, uh, the, Paul. You've done the Bosphorus and and the the yachting there and of course they've got the blue mosque and the then they've got the massive shopping mall there it's a lot of fun and especially you know a long layover you got to stop over in istanbul yeah no it's uh it is an amazing experience you you do get that, that taste of the middle eastern uh culture as well so it's 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 a unique because it's istanbul is the one city that's on two continents and i don't know if people realize it is both in europe and it's also in Asia when that's what that Bosphorus separates. So a little knowledge for the day for everybody is the, the one city that's on two continents. Let's move on to number eight. We've got uh, Kenya and Tanzania. And this, these are two that you've experienced. I have not. This is on my, uh, on my bucket list, both of those destinations. So you'll have, to, you'll have to share your experience on this one. Well, Paul, uh, everybody should put a safari a photo safari onto their bucket list. Kenya and Tanzania are two great areas uh, that you can do. And you need to get there while there's still that wildlife. And, you know, it's starting to get a lot of more tourists there. And we're worried that it's going to get over over tourists uh, in, the, in the area. But they still have the Masamara. They got the Maasai people. And so it's just a delightful time to see wildlife and to, uh, to understand the culture there. And uh, we think now's a good time to, to put that on your bucket list for 2024. Get in that safari while the, you still have those natural wonders all around you. Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, number seven on the list, Japan. And I actually saw, and this would have been in my Travel Week in Review here within the last couple of weeks, that Japan is actually potentially the number one tourism destination for 2024 um, in regards to how they've been positioned. And again, as you've mentioned with uh, with Hong Kong and China, they they had a extreme slowdown during COVID and, and now that's opened back up. Yeah, Japan has really been off the map for almost five years because of COVID and other things. And now it's just wide open. People are rediscovering Japan, uh, the cherry blossoms, all the technology that's there, the trains. It's just a delightful time. It is very expensive, Paul. So you got to make sure you got enough when you go there. They have great hotels, great eating, and it's just a tremendous culture. Uh, when you head to Japan. And, and uh, so we think it's going to be a hot ticket this year. And we, we sense you're seeing that already with the airlines adding flights into Japan and continuing on to Japan. A lot of people don't realize it, but a lot of connecting flights go into Asia uh, through Japan, through a and and Japan Airlines. And so you've got just, a, it's a great gateway into Asia. But it's a great destination, and that's why we put it on the 2024 list, and it should be on your bucket list for 2024. Yeah, I know. We used to work with a local middle school here in town that that had a sister school over in Japan. And so we would send 20 to 30 students on an annual basis over there. It was part of their their curriculum. And in return, the school over there, it was a a very luxurious, uh, very select school over there. Every student that went to that school then came over and Lincoln, Nebraska was a part of their their time in the United States. So and I think some of the things there that come into play is just the safety factor. And you think about how large these towns are and uh, and yet they'll put their six year olds on a train to get to travel for an hour to go to a private school. So this experience is unlike anything that we have around here. I wish we had some high speed trains like they do in Japan. <laughs> I think both. An hour. Moving on to number six, and this is one of my favorites that was an unexpected favorite, was Portugal. Yes, Portugal. Um, we have a group of called the Women of the Midwest that are women-only tra- tours and travel, and they go to Portugal every year, and it's one of the delightful destinations that they've mentioned that we should uh, list as one of the, the top destinations. I actually think it's a better destination than Spain, 
even though Spain is always up to the top of a lot of Europeans and people on the East Coast, Spain's always up at the top usually. But I actually put Portugal above Spain this year. And I think uh, Porto and other areas. And Paul, you've been there, haven't you? Yeah, we uh, we, we just kind of travel, uh, figure out where we can go and what we can do so that we get upgraded when we're doing an international trip. And we tend to also go in the off season. So we went in January and we did Lisbon for a couple of days. And then we went over to the coast and uh, we were at a beautiful, I think it was a Marriott resort, 500 plus rooms. And I think they had less than 10 rooms occupied in January. So it was an amazing experience because there were no crowds. Um, now the downfall of going in the off season was that probably 50% of the, the, the restaurants uh, were not open. So it, right. it did limit some of, some of that experience. But uh, I would take a limited selection of restaurants and, and no crowd over a crowd and then having to fight and wait for a reservation any day. So, so yeah, it was amazing. And the weather was also very enjoyable in January when we went. So I would love to go back. Next on the list, we've got England. And then you've also got notated here, Beat the Heat. Well, England, you know, is uh, uh, also for its climate, you know, whereas a lot of Southern Europe this year hit 100 degrees. And people are saying, where can I go where it's cooler? And usually England is going to have a cooler summer. I mean, sometimes it'll get hot there. Uh, but it's usually going to have uh, weather that's going to be great. Now, I put down England, but it could be Scotland. Ireland, England, Wales, wherever it could be, any of those aisles that will make a great destination for 2024. And uh, we think that's a good destination, especially in the summertime, Paul. And then you have English speaking people. You know, the only bad thing is they drive on the wrong side of the road. But, uh, you know, a lot of people will do tours or hire a guide to, to drive them. But it takes a little bit of a focus to stay on the left side of the road, Paul. Or depending on who you're traveling with, that can be part of the adventure. If you've got the uh, somebody else that's ready for that adventure, to have that be part of the fun. Moving on, number four, another one that's on my bucket list that I have not been able to uh, enjoy yet, but Australia and New Zealand. You bet. And just like most people that that dealt with COVID, we had the same thing, but they really clamped down on things in, in those two areas. And two of the most beautiful areas in the world, Australia, New Zealand. Most people think of Australia first, but I actually think of New Zealand and being the more beautiful. Of course, in Australia, you have the uh, Sydney and, and, and just the, then you also got the outback and you've got the, the, uh, the reef area and so the Gold Coast. And so there's so much to do in Australia, as is there in New Zealand. It's just so long, far away. you got to take that 15 or 17 hour flight to get there. But once you get there, uh, it's a delightful time. And you've got to do the North Island in New Zealand and the South Island. They're two different areas altogether. And the same with uh, uh, when you get to Australia, you know, the Outback's a lot different than in uh, Sydney or Melbourne or up along the Gold Coast. Yeah, I know when we've had people that we've sent down to both Australia and New Zealand, they tend to come back, and it was New Zealand that was the, the piece of the trip that they enjoyed the most. So for whatever reason, uh, I, I think it's primarily the beauty, just the natural beauty of New Zealand, that's what people remember from that. So moving on, and this is, uh, this is definitely one of my favorite whole areas of the world, is Scandinavia is in at number three, and... I'm booked to go spend two weeks over in uh, Norway next summer with the family. We did a cruise once where we hit Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark. Um, just amazing experience. It's, it's and I'm a nature guy. I love the outdoors, and so Alaska is one of my favorite places to go. And then the first time we went to Norway, Norway was like two to, to three X what, what my experience in Alaska was. So, you know, if you're somebody that likes that Alaska experience, I would definitely suggest Scandinavia be something that you put towards the top of that bucket list because it's an amazing time. Well, of course, uh, especially as hot as it got again this, this year in Southern Europe, people are going to flock this year. It's already getting full in Scandinavia. You've got Denmark, 
uh, you know, your Norway, your Finland, all those great countries, and they're going to be full. So you need, if you're thinking about going there, you better book it now because we've got some tours that are having difficulty finding space already for next summer. But you can imagine they have a window that's kind of a uh, very short window. You're going to start in May and go to October, and that's about it, maybe September at the latest. And then that weather turns on you pretty good. But I kind of like it in that shoulder season, Paul, when there aren't the crowds. But some people want to go there for the cool weather. They don't want to go there for the cold weather. But I think more and more people are, are willing to travel in the cold. And I think the Scandinavian countries of uh, – uh, Denmark, you know, Norway, Finland. Although Finland, we don't send many people to Finland. It, Hel Helsinki is a cool town. That's one where we did it for a day at a cool market right there off the water where we got off the ship and, and wandering around. It's one of those places I would love to go back and spend more time. But yeah, it's really not one that people talk about. So, I mean, yeah. I think that's part of the fun of it. Yeah, don't forget about uh, Copenhagen and Denmark. You know, that's a delightful town. And um, so anything in the Scandinavia is going to be hot in 2024, and you ought to put it on your list. So we haven't talked about Italy yet, So and we're down to the top two. So now we figure out, what uh, is, is Italy number one, or is there something that tops Italy? And you've got Italy at number two. So that'll leave everybody hanging for what's number one. Yeah, Italy's usually number one, but I put it number two this year just because the crowds are so heavy and still going to be heavy next year. That's why I'm recommending anybody that travels to Italy, look at the off season, look at October, November, December, January, February, even March, those six months pretty much. You're going to find great things. We are in Italy right now as I'm broadcasting. And we were in Gubbio today, and the streets are empty. The restaurants are, you can walk right in. And great time. You see everything. It was a nice, cool 45 degrees. So you can walk the streets. You're not sweating. You're not going shoulder to shoulder. Now, the Christmas markets in the main cities of Arezzo are just massive. So you got to watch out for those on the weekend. But if you don't go on the weekend, we were in Sunday, we were in Arezzo. And it was just wall-to-wall -wall people because they had an antique festival and a Christmas festival going on at the same time. Normally, it wouldn't be that bad. But this is the time to visit Italy. It's fantastic. And Italy, of course, you've got Rome, Florence, Venice. And we're in the undiscovered area of Umbria right now. We're looking at a villa here. And we're doing some research on it, checking out all the great places to eat and see and visit in Italy, and uh, we think uh, the middle of Italy is going to be the up-and-comer and be the next uh, Tuscany will be the province of Umbria. So we're very excited about it. I also love to do the Italian Riviera, where you can go along the coast, to do Cinque Terre, Portofino, Santa Margarita, all those areas along the, the Italian Riviera. And then you can go south of Rome into the Amalfi Coast, and uh, uh, all those beautiful, beautiful areas. So Italian, put Italy on your list if you haven't been here for 2024. You kind of hit on the, the timing and the shoulder season, and I think what a lot of us as Americans don't understand is that much of the rest of the world during the summer, you know, the, the places of employment just shut down. And Italy is a global destination for vacation. So, I mean, the it's when they shut down, that's when they go and they go for a month at a time. So, you know, that really makes it so that you've got the whole globe that's that's hitting some of these destinations. So that makes it so that when you do go in that shoulder season, you know, that's part of the 11 months that the rest of the world's working and you get much a much greater experience. So I think some of it comes to just having the context of how the rest of the world uh, works with, with their employment. So, all right, that gets us through two through 10. So number one on Steve's list of top 10 international travel destinations for 2024. Drum roll, please. Greece as number one for 2024. Well, Greece is, uh, has been hot. This last year is going to be tremendously hot next year. And uh, they've got everything going for it. They've got great history, great beaches. You know, Athens is the center of Greece, but there's so many different places. Uh, if you're a biblical buff like me, you like doing the Corinth or the Philippi or any of those areas, you're in the middle of everything. 
you know you're not far from Israel, you're not far from Turkey, drive away from Croatia, and you've got a boat ride across to Italy, so you're in the center of everything. You're, you're also by Istanbul, so Greece is really in the center part of almost everything in Southern Europe and in the Middle East, and you just have tremendous people with a tremendous culture, and the history is amazing, and those people that aren't interested in history and just want to lay on a beach you're not going to find prettier beaches or prettier water than Greece, and there's still great value in Greece. So uh, I think that's going to be the, uh, my number one destination for 2024. And um, I think uh, many people are going, going to and have already looked at Greece. And believe it or not, Paul, I talked to Ann Fulby Olson, who lives in Greece, works with our company, and she's saying things are full. They're full for next year. So you better get better get going on that if you're interested and have a little bit of flexibility so you can fit in and go see Greece. In the next couple of weeks, we'll have the top domestic destinations for you. And then, Paul, on the 1st of January, I start out with the top 70 predictions, travel predictions for 2024. And that's always fun. And I'm looking forward to it. Oh, everybody's excited, I'm sure. I know you get lots of replies to that. Some people that agree, some people that disagree, and some people that uh, wonder where your brain comes up with these things. So well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule over there to join us today, Steve. And uh, uh, we've got Steve Glenn. I'm Paul Glenn. We thank everybody for joining us today. Please like, subscribe, share, and add any questions or comments below so we can make sure we're hitting on the topics that are of value to you in future episodes. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.